One topic that is frequently confusing is advanced directives. So what is an advanced directive? It's a plan for the unexpected. It tells your family, friends, healthcare providers, and healthcare agent what your goals, values, and wishes are when the unexpected occurs. There are actually four directives that fall underneath advanced care planning. It's important to talk about all four of them, and I think uh, we'll start with the power of attorney of health care. That's the first one. The second one is declaration to physicians, or better known as the living will. The third one is the do not resuscitate. And then finally, the fourth one is the um, authorization for final disposition. Now those are big words and it's very compli can, can be very complicated. So let's talk about those a little bit more in detail. You may have heard of some of these um, and you may not have. They are actually legal documents, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a lawyer involved. In fact, there are legal forms that you can fill out with your providers. The power of attorney for healthcare is the, probably the biggest and most comprehensive document. It covers uh, who it is. It's a, sort of a process that you go through that picks a healthcare power of attorney agent. And this agent is really important because they're the one that's going to make decisions on your behalf. The healthcare power of attorney agent is the person who legally makes decisions on your behalf. And this person is only allowed to make decisions on your behalf if it is determined by two providers that says that, that you are no longer able to make decisions on your own. Now this is really important because we don't want people making decisions on our behalf unless, unless it's determined necessary. So that kind of restricts, you know, turning that form into something else and gets two physicians or two providers that determine that. Another important concept around healthcare power of attorney is that the next of kin law. The next of kin law states that if something happens to you and you can't make decisions, then your family automatically is able to make decisions on your behalf. But because Wisconsin is not a next of kin state, that doesn't happen here. That's all the more reason why it's very important for all people to get a healthcare power of attorney agent selected and complete an advanced directive identifying who that person is. That allows you to um, go ahead and activate that once you are no longer able to make decisions. But let's say you don't have that form and then you something happens to you and you're not able to make decisions. Then your case goes to the courts. And when your case goes to the courts, unfortunately you get an, a guardian appointed. And that can be a, a bit of a situation because it can actually impact your rights. The, the specific rights would include your right to vote, your right to get married, your right to apply for a license. So that could be a really big problem, but also importantly, you can't travel sometimes if you have an appointed guardian. So it really makes it important to get an advanced directive in place so that those rights are not impacted in any way. The healthcare power of attorney sounds like a really valuable document to have in place. You mentioned the term healthcare agent. And I'd like to spend some time reviewing who would make a good healthcare agent today. So a healthcare agent could be a family member, a friend, a community member, or an acquaintance. And in order to have good qualities for a healthcare agent, typically we think of those qualities as somebody who's willing to accept the job, somebody who is able to make decisions in difficult moments, somebody who will follow your healthcare wishes even if they may not agree with them, also, somebody who really cares about your well-being and would not take advantage of you if you were in a situation where you were very ill. And then lastly, you want to make sure that your healthcare agent is somebody that your healthcare provider team is able to contact easily, and whether that be remotely or in person. Ideally, the healthcare agent would be included in the completion of the advanced directive or the healthcare power of attorney, but we know that that's not always possible. And in those cases, we would suggest that you have the conversation with your healthcare agent about your healthcare wishes so that they feel confident in carrying out those wishes if they would be in the situation where they would need to speak on your behalf. The healthcare agent, as we had already emphasized, does not make healthcare wishes for you on the completion of your healthcare power of attorney document. They would only be the voice and speak on your behalf if two providers would determine that you are no longer able to make 
your healthcare decisions for yourself. If I'm understanding correctly, then the healthcare power of attorney allows you to decide in advance who you want to make decisions for you. Uh, it's a really good point. But one thing I want to point out is this is an extraordinary gift. This is something that is like uh, your life legacy. It's the last piece that allows you full control on what it is that you want and how you want the things uh, at end of life to go. So this can be a really important document to um, make sure that uh, loved ones are aware that you've selected someone who you care about, you trust, and that uh, things are essentially going the way that you had intended. Let's discuss another part of advanced care planning, the living will legally called the Declaration for Physicians. So it can either be part of your healthcare power of attorney or it can be a separate legal document. It only applies to the situation that you are unable to speak for yourself and there is a significant quality of life change. For example, a terminal illness, persistent vegetative state, perhaps you're on a ventilator. So this is important to remember that it does not apply to other situations. It only applies if your physician has a question about a significant change in your quality of life. You may be wondering if a DNR order is included in the living will. DNR stands for do not resuscitate. A DNR is a separate document and it indicates that you would not want CPR or cardiopulmonary resuscitation done in an acute episode. This document must be completed by you and your provider. After you've completed the DNR order, if that is your choice, it is very important that you wear a DNR bracelet. In the event that there was an emergency and emergency personnel came to, to the event, they would look for the DNR bracelet to determine whether or not they should start CPR. If you're not wearing a bracelet, the emergency personnel will not know that you have a DNR order in place. If you have questions about obtaining a DNR order or a DNR bracelet, please reach out to your healthcare provider. So a DNR sounds pretty important. Uh, let's kind of recap that a little bit. Um, a DNR may or may not be included in the healthcare power of attorney document. Uh, but it can be completed separately and used, but it has to also have a provider sign for that. So that's something that's really important to consider with that. Um, so you can do that without also making a legal, a living will. And if you have a DNR, you really should commit to wearing that bracelet because the EMS will start CPR if you do not wear a bracelet designating that you are DNR. The other important thing is the authorization for final disposition. This is another advanced directive that you can complete, which specifies more around the areas that are unique to religious rituals, preferences or practices. It helps to kind of clarify what it is that you would want done uh, towards the end of life. And it's more specific to your personal preferences that you've sort of built your life around. Things that are important, including funeral arrangements, whether you would have select a funeral home, viewing, burial, and or mem memorial. The other important concept around the authorization for final disposition is where you want your remains to go and how you want those handled. All documents so far have pertained to healthcare. So let's jut over for just a moment and talk about what happens for your finances. A durable financial power of attorney is the legal document that tells the banks who you've chosen to assist paying bills or um, sign your legal contracts or sell your property. It's important to remember that unlike medical decisions, which require two physicians to authorize and to make it an active document, a durable financial power of attorney is active as soon as it is notarized. It is also the only piece of an advanced directive in the state of Wisconsin that requires notarization. So please remember, whoever you choose has access to your finances as soon as the document is notarized. It sounds like there are so many legal documents in place for people to really honor their healthcare wishes. But you may be wondering, what if you have a functional impairment that leaves you difficult to understand your healthcare provider team or difficult to communicate your wishes, but you still retain that right to make healthcare decisions for yourself. 
There is another option, a legal option called supportive decision making. And this option is for people with functional impairment and allows them to retain that right and empower them to make their own healthcare decisions by putting in place supports to assist them with that. So let's just be clear what functional impairment is. So functional impairment includes anybody who has a physical, developmental, or mental health condition that significantly impairs their ability in one or more areas of their life. Supportive decision-making can be helpful when people need assistance with communication, learning, mobility, self-care, or self-direction. Supportive decision-making document is a legal agreement that allows the person with functional impairment to make decisions for themselves while putting in supports to help make that happen. You can nominate a person or people called supporters. It allows you to be able to have multiple agreements with multiple people for multiple different types of support. It is important to know that you will need to provide consent for your supporters to hear, receive, and communicate information with those that you work most closely with. And this may include teachers, bankers, healthcare professionals, and vocational specialists. Supported decision-making sounds really important and most importantly in the way of keeping people independent. So that's a really important topic. Uh, sometimes people wonder what, what kind of things the supported decision-making people uh, can support with. And that would include gathering and understanding information, reading complicated information, explaining and comparing options to help make a decision, and then finally sometimes communicating the individual's choices to others once they learn what those are. Supported decision making is a different type of advanced directive and it's really that agreement between the individual and the supporter that allows the individual to maintain that independence. I think that's such an important concept to, to consider as well in advanced directives. So regardless if we're talking about supporters and supported decision making, financial power of attorney, or the all-encompassing advanced directive and healthcare power, for healthcare power of attorney, it all is about empowering you to make your own choices when you're not able to speak for yourself. Thank you for taking time to learn about these important topics with us. If you would like additional resources, please refer to the links on our website.